Terry Walters is a food educator, motivational speaker, and holistic human who believes in eating food close to the source. Food she calls clean food. She cooks with love, good intention, and fresh ingredients. It is my pleasure to welcome Terry Walters back to Studio 4 to tell us more all the way from Connecticut. Connecticut, yeah. Connecticut, that <laughs> Thanks for great having me. state. <laughs> yes. It is a great state. I, Thank you. I like it there. Now, you apparently run marathons too. I do, and, and I have felt the effects of food as fuel in my marathons every single time. But yeah, and eating clean and being able to fuel our activity mm -hmm. so that we can do what we want, whether it's running a marathon or just getting through our day sure. is so key. So eat clean. I know you told me before what that means, clean food, but, but you say if you eat clean, you'll think clean. <laughs> Doesn't mean, well, you know, you'll think cleaner. Maybe no, that's it. Or Doesn't maybe mean you don't cuss. Clear, clear, but cleaner on the inside, where mm. everything's operating with efficiency, so that the toxins are not in our body, and so that we have a deeper connection with our thoughts, and we can listen to what our body needs and is craving, and fulfill those needs, and think more clearly. Fewer mood swings, just more even mm. across the board. When you look at all the trends, and there are so many mm -hmm. in food, uh, and now it seems to be superfoods. And there's, there are lists of 10, lists of 20, but they always seem to have salmon, uh, uh, veg, fruit, lean meat, blueberries, raspberries, blackberries, mm -hmm. oranges, dark green, low-fat yogurt, You'll anything else. You'll be getting else. my favorite. <laughs> What's green. that? Kale. Oh, kale, kale, of course. Kale collard greens, all mm -hmm. those super nutritional dark leafy greens that are full of calcium and minerals that alkalinize the body. And I think that for many people, if you're eating the colors of the rainbow, green is probably the one color that we need the most and that we get the least of. So dark kale's green. My dark leafy greens. Uh, do you have a recipe for kale that it makes it taste a little more delicious? <laughs> a little garlic, little what, little olive oil? Well, I think that the, the easiest way is to take your kale and put it into a, a big bin of water, give it a good wash, chop it up, and drizzle a little olive oil in a, in a skillet, mm. and just put the kale in with the olive oil. You can add a little salt. You can add whatever you have, some onions, some leeks, whatever. Put it all together, and when you take it off, drizzle a little more extra virgin olive oil on mm. it. I, if it's not cooking down and you don't want to use as much olive oil, use water to saute and then add the oil after so you're getting the nutritional benefits. Well, you talk a lot about methods of cooking, and I know the Asians are very good at using water mm -hmm. and poaching and not frying and not barbecue. Well, they barbecue, <laughs> but you know what I mean? I do. But, you know, you don't even have to cook kale. If you rub kale with some olive oil or with a little mm. bit of um, avocado even and let it sit, it'll, it will soften and you can eat it raw. Delicious. Uh, an avocado, yum. A uh, good fat, right? Absolutely. And then you're getting the health, all the health benefits of the kale. The more we process the food, the more nutritional value we take out, which doesn't mean that we have to eat it unprocessed. Mm -hmm. It just is a guideline so that we know. But the reality is if, if sauteing that kale is what makes it delicious to you, better to saute it and have it with the reduced nutritional value than not have it at all. Sure. And I know you eat seasonal and you eat fresh, and I doubt you uh, eat much junk food. But in the book, you have things like cashew cream mm -hmm. and chocolate dessert, so you don't deprive yourself. Well, there are five tastes, sweet, sour, salty, bitter, and pungent. So the very first one I pungent? said, pungent, hot, oh, pungent. spicy. I thought you said pungent. I thought no. pungent, <laughs> pungent. Okay. That's a food group, the, the fudging. <laughs> um, and so sweet was the first taste that I mentioned. It's a valid taste. So if we don't have it nutritionally, we're going to crave it mm -hmm. non-nutritionally. Mm -hmm. And honestly, it's a guideline. Eating clean isn't about rigidity. As you said, it's not about deprivation. It's a perspective so that we can make healthy choices. And there's room for everything, sure. as long as we know how we can improve our health and what the options are so that we're making those choices knowingly. It's integrated. It's, it's an integrative nutrition of sorts. How did you get into this? Were you watching cooking shows on television? <laughs> well, um, actually, when I got into it, there were no cooking shows on television. Oh, okay. But there was one in my own home, and my mother always made food from scratch. We don't even hear people say that term anymore, from scratch. 
but um, the meals were whole and it was always my default mode was this is what food is and when I had children of my own it took on even more significance that now I really needed to understand but I was always very intimidated by it and um, when I realized that it really wasn't that difficult no and I started taking my children to the farm and believe it or not I started taking them to the dump and we started seeing this cycle that the food comes from someplace and it goes someplace and it really connected everything and because I love to cook and I love to eat food was such a huge part of our lives and with young girls I didn't want it to be overemphasized mm -hmm. so I shifted my focus on from getting the food into them to teaching them how to make healthy choices and then stepping back and letting it be their choice. Okay, homegrown, mostly organic. Mostly organic. Well, in my kitchen. All organic? You know, eating clean is different for every person. So for one person, cleaning up their diet might mean taking out artificial ingredients. Sure. For the next person, it could be getting rid of the package altogether. And for even another person, it might mean going straight to the farm. So it's different. There are no judgments. There's no end ideal. It's just doing the best we can with what we have. And making it delicious because uh, your recipes, uh, whether uh, it's bourbon crisp with fresh figs, <laughs> oh, oh yeah, and there are or fingerling in that. potatoes, well there's peaches in there too, but fingerling potatoes and green beans with lemon dill dressing, yum. Well you asked about the kale as your very first question and I have to say I think that so often we don't know how to combine foods and tastes so for many people kale might be bitter but when you put a little sweeter white wine in there it neutralizes that bitterness or when you put it with some sweeter brown rice you know when we combine tastes it makes each of the tastes stand out in such a way that they're mm -hmm. complemented and they don't they're not as abrasive to us or offensive